Hello and welcome to BIM 360 Basics. We're continuing in our video series on collaboration for Civil 3D. We've talked about whether or not you should consider using collaboration for Civil 3D, and we've talked about our fictitious project team for the project I'm going to present to you. Now we're ready to create the project. I'm in BIM 360 and I'm on the account admin page. How did I get to the account admin page? I clicked the module selector up here in the top left corner and then clicked account admin. Depending on what products you have and privileges you have, you may see different options here in this top left menu. From this screen, I want to make sure I click the projects tab and then click add. I'm going to call this project C4C Collaboration for Civil and I've done this C4C project a few times, so I'm going to call this the January 2020 version. I'll choose my project type. We'll just say this is a hotel doesn't really matter in this example. And you can see there's lots of information that you can provide in the project setup here, and I urge you to do so. In the interest of time, I'm not going to fill out this information. I'll just go ahead and click Save and Continue. The next thing I need to do is activate Document Management. So I'll click the Activate button next to Document Management, and I need to assign a project admin. I'll assign myself enter in my email address and my company and click Save. And I want to point out that over here in the top left corner you'll see the name of the company that I work for is Epic Architects. And by the way, everyone that I introduced to you on the project team is a member of Epic Architects except for one. Hans Close is from an external consultant and he's going to be our drainage engineer. All right, so document management is currently activating. That may spin for a few seconds. And when this icon turns into a green check mark, we can continue. All right, the activation's finished. I'll scroll down and click Finish. So here's my new project, C4C, January 2020. I'll go ahead and click on that. And that takes me to the project admin page for this project. Now it's time for me to add all of the users that we talked about in that earlier video. So if you remember, our project manager is Mindy Patel. Now I have added Mindy to other projects, so she's already in the system. If she weren't, she wouldn't pop up here like you're seeing. I would just have to type out her entire email address. But since she's been here before, I can click her name and then click select. I could add all of them at once, I'm going to do Mindy by herself, and then we'll add the other ones in bulk. So Mindy is a member of my company, Epic Architects. We work together, and she is going to be the project manager for this project. So I'll scroll down and find that role. It's really important that you assign roles to people because that really helps expedite assigning permissions. I don't want Mindy to be a project admin, so I'll uncheck that option and click Add to Project. So let's take a quick look at our project team one more time to see the other people that we need to add. So we've already added Mindy. I'm already in the project because I'm the project admin. And that leaves Tom, Paula, and Greg that need to be added. We're going to save Hans until later because we're going to pretend we don't know that he needs to be involved in the project just yet. So let's add Tom, Paula, and Greg. So I'll click Add once again. Start typing in Tom's name, he pops up. Start typing in Paula's name. And then start typing in Greg. I'll go ahead and click Select. These are all folks who belong to Epic Architects. And let's see, Tom is our surveyor, so let's type that in so we don't have to scroll through the entire list. Paula is actually our designer. And Greg is our civil engineer. We'll add all three of those to the project. And we just want to make sure that document management is turned on for all of them. So for now, that's our, our entire project team. Myself is the BIM manager. Greg is our civil engineer. Mindy is the project manager. Paula is our designer. And Tom is our surveyor. Now let's jump over into document management and make sure that these folks have access to the folders that they're going to need to access. So I'll click the module selector and switch over to document management. 
and I'm going to assume that this is your first time using BIM 360 document management. You'll notice right away that there are two default folders or sections to BIM 360 docs, plans and project files. Everything we're going to talk about today is going to happen in the project files area, and that's the area that Civil 3D interacts with when you're collaborating. The plans folder is kind of where you share your official documents, whereas project files is work in progress. Your design team would all have access to project files, but you wouldn't let your client, let's say, or other external parties to the project have access to project files. That's where the work is happening. But the plans folder might be where your client can get in and review your 50% submission or your final submission, or contractors can get in and view the final documents and bid on them. So that's just a brief description of how the plans and project files sections work and how they're different from each other. As I said, we're going to stick to the project files area for this, uh, for this example. So I need to make sure all the people that need to get into the project have permissions either to this folder or to any subfolders that I create. Now I understand that you all have specific folder structures to your projects and you can absolutely build those out beneath the project files area exactly how you do it on your file server in your office. For simplicity and time, I'm just going to use the project files folder as my main project folder and not create any substructure underneath that. So at this top level, I just need to make sure that everyone who needs to access the project can access it. And to do that, I'll click the ellipsis and go to permissions. I'm already in the folder as, uh, as having the maximum amount of permissions because I'm the project admin. So let's add our other folks. Let's see, we've got Mindy, who is our project manager. We'll add her. We've got Tom, who's our surveyor. We'll add him. We've got Greg, who is our civil engineer. We'll add Greg. And we've also got Paula, who is our designer. Now, let's think about this for a second. I'm about to add all these people individually which I guarantee you is going to be the first place your mind goes when you want to give people access to the project. But wouldn't it be better to add the roles instead? That way, if roles change, maybe Paula's going to be out on vacation for a few weeks, so somebody needs to fill in as the designer for the project. Well, if I add that person, as we did earlier, to the user section of the project, all I need to do is add them in and make sure the role is assigned to designer and they'll automatically get access to this folder and any other folder where I've specifically assigned access to designers. So let's not do this. Let's not do individual users, but instead let's do roles. So our project manager is, as you may recall, Mindy, but instead of adding Mindy by name, we're going to add project managers to this folder and we're going to add designers and we're going to add surveyors. And who else do we have? We also have civil engineers. Now, anyone added to the project who is assigned any one of these roles is going to be given access to this project. I'll select the permission level. And since these are all team members who are going, who are going to be actively accessing and modifying the, the files in here, I want to make sure they have at least edit permission, and maybe even folder control, which kind of gives them project admin privileges to this folder. They can invite additional people, they can add new folders, change permissions, that sort of thing. I'm going to just give them edit privileges, and that will suffice for the collaboration that needs to happen in Civil 3D. I'll go ahead and click Add. And you'll notice over on the right that those roles are added and BIM 360 automatically knows who the members of those roles are. Greg being our civil engineer, Paula being our designer, and so on. And as I add more people to the project or maybe swap out people, that part's going to take care of itself. And those folks will automatically be given permission to this folder and will be able to access the project from Civil 3D. So that's all we need to do so far to set up the project in BIM 360. In the next video, we'll look at setting up Civil 3D. Thanks for visiting BIM 360 Basics. Be sure to keep checking back for more BIM 360 tips, tricks, and tutorials.